Hey everybody. So today what I want to do is I want to show you how to measure how much power your car makes without using anything more than your cell phone. And this isn't some kind of pitch for a cell phone app or anything. I'm going to show you how to use the camera on your phone and a little bit of math to calculate how much power your car makes. Ideally you'll have something a little better than your cell phone that you can use. So I've got my phone here, but what I'll be using is a GoPro. But the idea is the same no matter what. So let's start getting into how we're going to go about doing this. And then we'll go take a couple of test runs and I'll show you how to go through the math. So just a quick overview of how we're going to go about doing this is what we're going to do is we are going to go make a couple of passes in the car. So what I do is I start in second gear and from about a thousand RPMs, maybe 1200 RPMs, I ease into the gas and go full throttle. And what you do is you use a camera to record the tachometer. And as the camera is recording, you will accelerate up to red line or about red line. And what we can do is we can use the numbers off the tachometer in the video to come up with how much power it makes. Now of course with this you need to be careful to follow the speed limits and be aware of your surroundings while you're doing this so don't focus too much on the phone you need to pay attention to driving while doing this so what you need to do is use uh, some type of holder to place the phone in a position where it can record but once we have these numbers, we can do a little bit of math to come up with how much power the car makes thereabout. Uh, it's pretty, it can be pretty accurate, but you just need to be careful with all the numbers along the way to get the best numbers you can. The first thing that we will need for calculating power is the size of the tires on the car. So we'll come in here and we'll find the size of the tire on here somewhere. Here we go. So this is a 205 50 15. So just a quick overview of what the numbers mean. 205 is how wide the tire is. 50 is the aspect ratio that tells you how thick the sidewall is as a percentage of how wide it is. And then 15 refers to the diameter of the wheel that the tire is on. So we're going to use these three numbers to calculate how tall the tire is. And then this is going to go into the math that we're going to be using. What I'll do is I'll make a Google Sheet that you can put all of these numbers into. And your acceleration runs a little bit later. And with that, it'll calculate everything for you. But we'll just kind of lightly go over the math. Next, what we're going to need is the gearing ratios of the transmission. So I'm just showing you the transmission here. This isn't where we're going to find the gear ratios. So usually you can find the ratios published in your owner's manual or on the internet somewhere. A lot of forums have the gear ratios up there. I know Car and Driver, for example, they'll publish gearing ratios on the reviews. So we're going to be using that. So another thing we need is the weight of the car. So what I do is I actually have scales that I use. So I just had to weigh this for a race. Uh, we're classed by power to weight ratios, so I just had to weigh the car on the scales that I have. And with that number, um, the more accurate it can be, the better. So if you have access to scales, or potentially like the port of entry scales that the government uses along the highways, that would be the most accurate way. Or what you can do is you can also look up the curb weight of your car, and you have to be careful to add your weight on top of that and also know what the manufacturer published for a curb weight. So some manufacturers they'll publish on a full tank, some will publish on uh, empty tank, and then some will even publish with a passenger in the car. So you just have to look up how the manufacturer publishes curb weight if that's what you're going to be using if you don't have access to scales. And with that number, with the weight, we can calculate how much force the engine's putting out by looking at how quickly it accelerates. So we're inside the car now, and what you can do is use some type of camera or uh, phone holder to position your phone 
in an area where the camera can look at the tachometer and has a steady position to record. So what I'm going to be using is this GoPro here. And this holder allows me to position it on that bezel so I can get the camera inside and that allows me to position the camera pretty accurately. And what I'm going to do, so with this, the higher the frame rate of your camera, the better it will be. So most phones will record at 60 FPS these days. Some will even record at 120. Um, but you'll want to make sure that you have the highest setting possible. What I want to do is this GoPro usually records in like a wide angle format. But I'm going to set this up to record in a linear format, which you can do in GoPro Hero 4s and up. And what that allows me to do is if the camera is in the wide angle mode, it kind of distorts the tachometer on either end, so that messes with the results a little bit. But if you have, have a linear field of view, then that helps to keep the numbers in a readable format while you're going through the footage. So I'm going to get this into position at the highest frame rate possible, and we'll go make a couple passes. All right, so I have my GoPro set up and about as angled as I can get it. What I'm actually doing is I'm using my phone as a preview connected to the camera so you can see I have it set up um, 720 uh, resolution with 240 frames per second. But what we're going to do now that we have the camera in position is we're going to go drive and we want the engine up to temperature as best as we can get it. So drive around for a while, get everything up to temperature and once we do that, we will find a quiet road where we can do our testing. All right, so what you need to do is find a nice level area, or a nice level road that you can do your testing on. And what you wanna do is probably second gear is the gear you wanna choose. The faster you go in this test, the less accurate it is, and it'll actually show that you make less power. So you don't want to go in third or fourth gear and go 100 miles an hour just for load reasons or whatever, because that will actually make the test less accurate. So what we need to do here is find a pull off that we can take, or actually we'll join up with the highway here in a little bit. And the speed limit at the highway is 65 miles per hour. So we can merge onto the highway in second gear. And when we do that, we can accelerate up to red line, and that will put us at the speed limit. So that's a perfect scenario, and it's a nice level road here. So we'll do that, we'll get a couple of runs in, and we'll come back and look at the data. Okay, so now that we're back with a camera full of runs, what we want to do is look at some type of app um, that will show us the barometric pressure of where we're at, the temperature, and the humidity. So what we'll do is we'll use all of those in our calculations to correct for our acceleration data. And that will give us a corrected horsepower figure when we're all said and done, as opposed to just using the raw information, which will get us the most accurate result. because the temperature will affect the reading, humidity affects it to a smaller degree, and then atmospheric pressure definitely affects it where I'm at about 5,000 feet here, so my atmospheric pressure is a lot lower than sea level, so I wanna make sure I use that when calculating to have an accurate number when comparing to corrected numbers. So now that we're back from our runs, what we can do is we can use some type of program to look at our video files and what I'm using here is Adobe Premiere Pro which allows me to look at the frame count of the video as opposed to the time signature and I can also scrub around so I prefer this program but you can use um, basically any program you want so if you can look at the frame counts that's the optimal solution but time signatures also work so what you want to do is, in the spreadsheet, I have it set up to look at every 250 RPM. So what you'll do is you'll find the time signature, 
or frame count of that RPM. And once you find that, you'll input every 250 RPMs into the spreadsheet. And once you do that, it will be able to calculate what the acceleration is. The reason we look at the tachometer and not the speedometer for calculating acceleration is we can figure out what the speed is at the tires from the tachometer. And it's also a larger gauge for less information. So that allows us to look at it at a higher resolution, which means more accuracy as opposed to the speedometer. So here's the spreadsheet that I'm linking in the description for you to use. So here we can see that we have the frame count tab is the primary one, which is the most accurate to use. And all of the orange boxes are where you can input the information. Uh, gray boxes we want to leave alone. But what you'll do is, I'll have the spreadsheet locked down so nobody can edit it and mess with other people's inputs, but you can make a copy of it or download it to use. And once you do, you can input your information into the orange boxes. And if you need to, you can click on the timestamp tab instead of the frame count and input time signatures instead of frames if you're the software you're using doesn't have the ability to look at frames and basically just going through here and putting in all of your information the more precise you can be especially with the weight temperature barometric pressure and the counting of the frames the more accurate your results will be over on the right there you can see we have peak power and torque as well as the plots. The more runs you can make the more accurate it will be. So I have in here four passes or columns for four passes built in and the more you can build in the more accurate it will be. You can see in the bottom right I have the individual runs plotted and up top is the average. What we'll do is we'll compare this information to a dyno run I have from a couple weeks before I took this data and looking at it it's actually pretty close so where I have the ability to use my scales and then look at the tachometer I can get within about five percent which is relatively close all things considered you can see in the plot there is some jagged peaks which is just a result of the speed or the tachometer for whatever reason it doesn't look like the lines are very consistent but overall this is just kind of a fun way to get an estimate of how much power your car makes without having to pay for a dyno it's something you can use to look at differences that you make to your car so why don't you give it a shot and like I said earlier just make sure you're following all uh, road laws, make sure you're paying attention to your surroundings and you're not too focused on your phone or camera or whatever. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments so other people can see the questions and I'll try to answer it as best as I can or send me a message or an email or whatever. I think it'll be kind of fun if we can uh, kind of put together basically a summary of different cars out there especially if you have dyno sheets to compare to and we can just see how accurate we can get and what different cars are making so hopefully you found this video interesting or helpful or maybe gave you a couple of ideas on things you want to try but as always thanks for watching and I will catch you next time